Hey, everybody. So recently, there's been some uh, controversy circling around the internet with regards towards AI discoveries and whether or not like AI can actually like plausibly discover things and, and move science forward compared to humans. And it's kind of like a whole hoop, like hoopla about this going on right now, like all over the internet, right? Uh, and <clears throat> so I thought that would, this would be a good time to introduce and talk about this particular concept of the lion optimizer versus the atom optimizer. And I don't, I'm not sure how many people actually know about this. Like, actually, this is a fairly new topic for me overall as well with regards towards the lion optimizer. <laughs> and so diving into it specifically, the lion optimizer was released a few years ago, May 8th, 2023, in the research paper, Symbolic Discovery of Optimization Algorithms, put out by Google and UCLA. And within this research paper, they essentially uh, utilize AI models to discover and uh, find unique <laughs> algorithms. And then within this, they discover and find a unique algorithm specifically for optimization in this particular instance. And then if you're not familiar with optimization and the optimization problem, overall, uh, Adam and the Adam optimizer like reigns supreme when it comes to this, right? Like no one has been able to, uh, up until this point, upset or like outseed Adam on any level. It's just like Adam is, is it, right? Uh, and if you're not familiar with like how optimizers work, it's very straightforward. So looking at the image here that we're looking at, we're looking at a 3D graph, right, of, of, of these graphs. Um, and then you can have more than 3D. You can have 4D, 5D, 60, like 100D, but it just gets uh, more and more confusing and, and it doesn't look right to, to map out and to like actually illustrate out. But within like three-dimensional graph structures, what you can see is, is topology emerges, right? Uh, and then so you have peaks and valleys within that. And these peaks and valleys are extremely important. So what are optimizers in deep learning? In deep learning, we train models by adjusting their parameters, the weights and biases, to minimize a loss function. And so it all comes down to this loss function. The loss function quantifies how well the model is performing on a given task. For example, how many images it can classify incorrectly. And the lower the loss, the better the model. Gradient descent is a huge part of this loss function. The fundamental principle behind optimizers is gradient descent. The gradient of the loss function tells us the direction of steepest ascent, the direction to increase the loss. And then so we want to go in the opposite direction, right? We want to go in the uh, steepest descent to m uh, minimize the loss or uh, steepest ascent. Uh, uh, to think of it like rolling a ball down a hill and the gradient tells you which way is down. So uh, going back to our uh, this graph, right? And the, like we want to be at the top, uh, like we want to be at the mountain peak. And then so uh, we don't know where in this the mountain peak is. And then so we can, what we do is we measure uh, and we try to find wherever the floor is. And then we just say, go opposite of the floor. And then if you go opposite of the floor uh, within this topological graph, that, that, that leads to learning. And very simplistically, that's what's going on, right? So the optimizer's role. The, uh, an optimizer is an algorithm that implements a specific strategy for how to use the gradient to update the model's parameters. So the optimizer determines the size of the steps, like the learning rate, like how many, how big, like how far away should it move from the, 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 the center? And how big of a step do we take in the direction of the negative gradient? Too small and training is slow, too large and we might overshoot the minimum. And the direction of the steps, simple gradient descent just uses the negative gradient. Like, okay, it's going, it's down, go up. Whereas more advanced optimizers incorporate additional information like momentum or pass gradients to refine the direction. <clears throat> and then 
it's important because this topology isn't, isn't it's not it's not flat on any area, right? Um, and then you have local peaks and boundaries. And then what can happen is is like uh, the model can get stuck in one of those local lo like local minimas or those local um, boundaries, like like local valleys, and be like, eh, I'm, it's good enough here. <laughs> and so you need something that 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 is strong enough to push it out of those, but not like it, not where it's just like shooting it off into nothing, right? And then so that's kind of hard to do overall um and then so uh within that like uh, and essentially imagine you're trying to find the lowest point in a valley but you're blindfolded and then so the optimizer is your strategy for taking steps you have um, simple gradient descent which is to like fill the slope under your feet uh the gradient and take a small step downhill or you can also use momentum, and then so you can remember your previous steps and keep moving in a similar direction, like a ball rolling downhill, gathering speed. And then you have adaptive optimizers, which is where Adam comes in, which is adjusting your step based on how steep the slope has been in different directions. So Adam is great in this instance, and, and what it, it, it allows for is a more adaptive approach to this, right? It, it can... Um, move and adjust itself on the fly. So common optimizer types that you run into are uh, SGD or stochastic gradient descent, which is the most basic optimizer. And it updates parameters using the negative gradient multiplied by the learning rate. So often used with momentum, so SGD with momentum, which adds a velocity term that helps the optimizer accelerate in consistent directions and dampen oscillations. Been watching like any other my video, uh, other videos on my channel. I talk about um, fluid and dynamics within this as well. And then so, uh, if you're familiar with fluid dynamics on any level, all of this should sound very familiar to you, right? Which is why I make the correlation. It's very easy to make the correlation once you start understanding how this math actually works and breaks down between, hey, what's going on here is actual fluid dynamics. <laughs> and then so adaptive optimizers. These optimizers adjust the learning rate for each parameter individually based on the history of gradients for that parameter. This can be very helpful when some parameters need larger updates than others. And then so you've got different methods that do that, right? Like Adagrad, RMS prop, Atom, Atom W, etc. And then so let's break this down very simplistically, the key differences between Adam and Lion. And then so first of all, what is the Lion that we're going to talk about, right? So I've talked about Adam up to this point. If you're familiar with optimizers on any level, you're probably very familiar with Adam overall. Uh, Lion is essentially from this research paper, the, the Google research paper that I mentioned at the top, and then uh, from the AI models that were searching for optimizers, the best optimizer that they found was Lion. And the AI models said, hey, we found Lion, and Lion can outperform Adam. <laughs> and then if you're familiar, like, uh, the human assumption within that, like, going to, like, the controversy and the debate today, right, like, the human assumption would be, like, eh, nothing is going to beat Adam, right? That would be, like, the, like I, I can see a lot of people <laughs> doing that and saying, that, like, I haven't been able to beat Adam personally. I don't know a human that can be Adam. I haven't seen a human-made optimizer that has been able to beat Adam consistently across the board, across multiple different data sets, right? But so let's break down, uh, throw out our preconceived consumptions and actually perform science and look at the uh, exper the difference between Adam and Lion, and then let's run some experiments. So Adam versus Lion, core idea, Adam is, uh, utilizes adaptive learning rates based on estimates of a first and second moments of the gradients for momentum and scaling, whereas Lion uses the sign of the momentum for the update direction and a separate learned magnitude and it decouples direction and magnitude. The update rule for Adam, it's relatively simple. It involves moving averages of gradients and a squared gradients. Uh, whereas Lion is even simpler because it's based on the sine function and it's applied to the momentum as outlined above. For magnitude, Adam utilizes the magnitude of the update is determined by the adaptive learning rates uh, and it's computed from the first and the second moments, whereas Lion magnitude is largely determined by the learning rate with a small adjustment from multiplying the B2 in the original paper's version. Weight decay. Adam typically uses L2 regularization added to the loss, and whereas uh, Lion uses decoupled weight decay similar to Adam W. So kind of in simpler terms, uh, you can read through this and break it down, but uh, 
Adam likes a it's like a sophisticated bull, ball rolling down the hill. It remembers its past speed and momentum and adjusts its speed based on how steep the terrain has been in different directions. Whereas Lion is simpler. So it's like a simpler ball rolling downhill, but it only pays attention to which way is down, the sign of the gradient, and not how steep it is. And so it relies more on the overall learning rate to control the step size. So like the bottom line, there's uh, a lot of things that are counterintuitive with Lion that uh, most people wouldn't uncover. I wouldn't uncover it if it weren't for Lion itself working, right? I would not assume that a simpler optimizer uh, is what would beat out Adam. I would assume it's more complex and that's probably why why we haven't been able to because we're looking for always more complex um, optimizers right but so let's compare these like uh, we've done enough talking uh, about them we can do very simplistic tests right and then so in this instance I have three data sets and then I just like three very specific data sets and across the board and we're gonna test Adam versus lion on all three uh, and then uh, the very first one that I, I um, am loading here it's it, the scores are gonna be low on the uh, first data set uh, which is uh, expected um, for these models. But they're small because they're running within Google Colab, right? So I, I don't expect uh, miracles within this, uh, within uh, their uh, accuracy. Uh, but so on our first data set, what we can see is our Atom optimizer, and I'm utilizing Atom W in this instance because I mean this, these are like, um, like kind of CNN models. So. Uh, our Adam W is scoring 32.62% and line is 34.6%. So almost 2%, like an almost full 2% difference. Uh, and then when we look at our uh, like uh, the results that come out of it, <laughs> very significantly, Lion is, is um, very superior <laughs> in this instance. Uh, uh, with regards towards uh, certain metrics overall, like Lion is is beating out Adam significantly on some of these metrics, and by at least two percent overall in our end results. Now let's uh, take a look. Now I switch over to the the uh, like MNIST data sets. So we'll uh, first of all look at Fashion MNIST. Yeah, this is Fashion MNIST, uh, and then we load in here. I expect much higher accuracy <laughs> results on on MNIST, uh, and then Adam W seventy four point nine. Lion is at seventy seven point six. So uh, like two point uh, let's call it two point five uh, like uh, two point six percent difference, right? So, so even better uh, performance uh, difference between Lion and and Adam on this test, and then uh, same thing. The benchmarks are proving out, right? Like Lion is is beating out uh, and is um, superior to Adam on this particular test. Let's uh, so that's two for two. Let's go for three for three, right? Um, and then in this instance, I changed the the. Um, a data set as well. So this is a K, a K MNIST, uh, which is just like essentially like again more images, and then just like it's um, for like a, a Japanese kanji for is, is what K MNIST is, uh, and then it, it uh, is classifying those images, uh, and then what we can see here is Adam W gets fifty seven point seven, uh, whereas Lion gets sixty two point five six. So on this data set, it's beating Adam. Lion is beating out Adam by five percent. So on all of our tests, we're getting a, a range of between two to five percent, where Lion is beating out Adam on every single one of these tests, right? Uh, so uh, very cool overall uh, to see. Uh, and then in these debates, right? So then it's it's easy to debate uh, overall, like uh, you know, can AI or is AI at the point uh, where it's able to? move forward and advance uh, areas in these things and, and, and in these fields where humans can't. I mean, here's Lion here, and this is from 2023, right? Uh, and then uh, when it comes to optimizers, Adam is like, like, Adam is probably one of the most like, solidified uh, parts of AI. I think Adam would be exactly like the, the current controversy that people are talking about right now is around like CUDA kernels, right? Uh, like Adam is just as a solidified part of AI as CUDA kernels are. Uh, and then so the argument that people are making is like CUDA kernels are so solidified that it would be impossible essentially for an AI model to be able to figure this out because humans can't. It's the same argument for Adam. <laughs> you can literally cross apply all of those same arguments and and they would be just as applicable for Adam. But here we go, like here's another video with your own eyes, like disproving that logic, right? Like it's easy to just go out and debate things. And then oftentimes misinformation like flies faster than actual information just because it's easier 
to spread. Um, it's uh, depending on who spread. There's a lot of reasons why misinformation spreads faster than fact. But the bottom line is, is that you can personally end that chain. You can end that recursive loop yourself. Just stop the loop. Go test and experiment, right? It's that simple. If you, rather than getting stuck in, in a recursive debate loop, end the, deba end the debate, run an experiment, do something scientific, prove it out, and then you don't even have to engage in the loop afterwards at all because you understand and can, and can prove it out. I don't have to debate whether or not uh, an AI model can actually do these things because I'm looking at it right here with my own eyes. I just did it. and I've done it twice now in two days. So uh, if you like this subject content, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.